Good evening and welcome to MTV News Update for today, Wednesday, January 3, 2018. In the news tonight, a former sugar worker allegedly commits suicide due to economic pressures. Opposition gets more time to conduct due diligence on Chancellor and Chief Justice appointments. Sophia Vender claims she was raped by two policemen at the Turkine Police Station. And in court, a minor sent to jail for 18 months for stealing from his employer. With the details of these and other stories, I am Ashley Scotland. Thank you for joining us. Tonight's newscast begins very depressing as Nikhil John will explain that a family of Canal No. 2 West Bank Demerara is still trying to come to grips with the loss of their father last Friday. The family has not ruled out that he killed himself because of the closure of the Wales Sugar Factory. From the race, Bisasar of Innes Tanlitang West Bank Demerara died on Friday while receiving medical attention at the West Demerara Regional Hospital. Daughter of the deceased Defika Bisasar, during an interview said her father came home last Wednesday and had a disagreement with her mother. The young lady explained that after the disagreement, the deceased went upstairs of their two-story house where he drank the suspected poisonous substance. She added that when her father came home, he mentioned that the sugar estate was handing out some hampers. However, he was not entitled to receive. What I heard is that they were sharing some hamper to the employees that they lay off. And he went down to the wheels side, but I heard that he didn't go through. I don't know if they said his name wasn't on the list or uh, if they were, they, somebody gave him wrong news or it wasn't in the location and he went, something like that. But he came home back and mommy said he was talking about them earlier and that yeah, like to me, like he was studying the amount of money that it owed him. The deceased daughter further explained that her father was a habitual drinker who was also a farmer and would store the poison at home. The young lady said her mother heard her father vomiting and upon checking, she saw a white substance oozing from his mouth. That was when she raised an alarm and subsequently rushed him to the West Demerara Regional Hospital. When she heard that, she went to the toilet and saw what happened. And she thought he was just like, you know, creating a scene because how he would normally behave and stuff. But then she saw him, like this thing actually coming out of his mouth. And she decided to call the neighbors. When they came over, they saw what happened. They asked him, what happened? He told them. He told the guy that he drank poison, because and so they asked him where he drank the poison. He said upstairs. They asked him why he drank the poison. He didn't answer them. So then mommy went upstairs and then she saw the bottle, because she didn't know anything. He, she saw the bottle upstairs. The deceased leaves to mourn two daughters and his wife. Meantime, the Ghana Agricultural and General Workers Union is claiming. Because of the closure of the sugar factories, the man took his life. The union claims that the closure of the estates has a psychological effect on the workers who are being laid off. Another worker from the Rose Hall sugar estate also took his life. That individual, Joseph Mohabir, hanged himself on December 31. The union also claimed that the deceased could not bear the pressures of being jobless. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Pursuant to Article 127.1 of the Constitution, President David Granger today met with a leader of the opposition, Bar Jagdeo, to discuss the appointment of a substantive Chancellor of the Judiciary and Chief Justice. The two sides also discussed the nominees to the Teaching Service Commission. State Minister Joseph Harmon, who was present at the meeting, informed that the opposition requested more time to conduct their own due diligence regarding the two nominees. This request was granted by President Granger. The two sides are to meet again on February 7. A Sophia Vend is claiming that two cops forced themselves on her and raped her at the Turkine police station on New Year's Day. The men have since been placed under close arrest and crime chief Paul Williams has made it clear that possible charges loom. Details from Lashana Gomes Cornelius. Crime Chief Paul Williams, during a telephone interview with this newscast, related that when it comes to any matter of rape or other forms of sexual abuse, especially when the allegations are made against members of the Guyana Police Force, such matters are taken very seriously. 
we take it serious. And a member of the force raped somebody else, we take it serious too. So it's not no way that they will be treated much more special and different from anybody else who would have been investigating for such an allegation. So we're treating it very serious. And then more so, the thing is that it is so serious to the extreme that you know when members of the force charge criminally, most times it comes with two advice. One for the criminal aspect. So even if they choose to settle criminally, there's something there departmentally, so it comes with. So they can be dealt with departmentally. According to Williams, the police are currently awaiting legal advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions on the way forward. Upon receiving that report, Crime Chief Williams is adamant if charges are to be brought against the two officers, then such will be handed down. And once it go for the advice and the advice is there for them to be charged, they will be charged. When a member of the force is being involved in any criminal act and the DPP recommends charge, two things happen. There's a criminal charge, and also there's a departmental charge because to that effect, their conduct will totally affect the image of this organization. According to initial reports on New Year's Day, the female vendor from Sophia went to the Turkine police station to report on someone who threw squibs at her. Upon entering the station, the woman was met by a male officer whom she first reported the matter to. After inquiring to use the washroom, the woman was directed to a toilet on the upper flat of the building. The report further indicated that the woman was subsequently vised and subdued by the two officers before they allegedly forced themselves upon her. Being fearful for her life, moments after she was allegedly sexually abused, the woman bravely went and reported the matter to the commanding corporal on duty. According to the crime chief, the woman is cooperating closely with the investigators. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. More news still ahead. Do stay tuned. You can be a millionaire by only spending $100 on a Daily Million ticket. Simply pick any five numbers from 1 to 26, or you can buy a quick pick for your chance to win the Daily Millions. Purchase your tickets daily Monday through Saturday to get a chance to win $1 million every day. So, feeling lucky? Then buy a Daily Millions ticket today. Remember, a ticket today could make you rich today. Here's the news update. Welcome back. Farmers of Canal No. 2 are pleading with the relevant authorities to assist in draining the area as millions in cash crops is being lost. The farmlands have been inundated for a number of weeks. Find out more in this Yanis Abrams report. As the heavy rains continue, farmers from No. 2 Canal West Bank de Marara are again suffering as many acres of farmlands are inundated. It is said to have been this way for a number of weeks. News Update took a visit to Number 2 Canal to get a first-hand view of the more than 40 farmers that are affected by the flood. During an interview with the chairman of the Spillware Canal Number 2 Farmers Group, Mohamed Rashid, he stated that this has been the second time in seven months the farmers are counting their losses. Over 33 acres of farmlands with crops were seen covered with water. Rashid claims that the trench is not being maintained for the water to recede from the land. We, we have a problem if rain, we know rain fall, rain not going to affect me so much, but at the same time if the trench can clean and the water can free, flow free, we think we, we, we don't get a problem. Just like in the Namutu Canal, at the front of the land you see that the water, the, the, the place is clear and the water running free is something like that we look for. And it's not a, it's not a long distance they got to deal with. Because the region is, 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 is take care of at least three quarters of the trench. So they just, just got one thought to deal with. In July, the farmers had suffered from the heavy rainfall, which caused millions of dollars in losses. The senior said they are still not maintaining the trench, and that caused three quarters of the flooding for the farmers. I am 72 years of age, and the trench is good, good, good to go with this farming. And the lot is as the second, is, nobody has said, Sabi. We call upon the president, David Nagamutu. I can see what happened to the farmers in Nagamutu Canal and Spilwe. Spilwe. This is not progress, this is distress. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am 
Yanis Abrams. Police are still probing the circumstances surrounding the death of a one-month-old girl of Matthews Ridge Region 1 who was discovered dead on Christmas Day after being left unattended. F Division Commander Reverend Radat Budram says the police have reasons to believe that the child may have died from an illness. Find out more in this Lashana Gomes Canelis report. While dismissing reports that the mother of the child was consuming alcohol in the day of her child's demise, Commander Budram did indicate to this newscast that, based upon the police's initial investigation, it was uncovered that the infant, prior to her death, had been suffering from a cold. The, the, the information we got is that this child was suffering from some ailment, you know? The mother reported that this child was suffering from some ailment, some cold or something. Uh, she left the child and went somewhere when she returned to the child. We got a bit of the post-mortem and then the doctor decided, decided to determine the cause of death and then we were nowhere to go from there. In the meantime, Commander Budram revealed that the police are currently seeking legal advice from the Director of Public Prosecutions regarding the circumstances surrounding the child's death. On Christmas Day, reports surfaced that an infant, a one-month-old girl from Matthews Ridge, mysteriously died after being left unattended at home. According to the reports, the mother of the deceased the child is known by members in her community to be a regular consumer of alcohol and is said to habitually leave her young infant home alone. On the day of the child's death, the woman reportedly took the lifeless body to the regional hospital where it was discovered that the child had died for at least four hours. The woman was subsequently taken into police custody and questioned extensively. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashana Gomes Cornelius. The Three Kids Foundation has already started its life-saving and much-appreciated work in Guyana as they will be funding six children to undergo surgeries in India. The children will be accompanied by a parent and will spend three weeks in the country. Find out more from Zandi Ramatar. Six children are set to depart Guyana for India with a parent or guardian early this year to acquire much-needed surgery. This is according to operations manager of the Three Rivers Kids Foundation, Lita Gayadin. Two of them will be undertaking eye surgeries, while three of them will be undergoing operations for nephrotic syndrome or kidney damages. Another child is expected to undergo cosmetic surgery for cleft palate. Each family is expected to stay three weeks in the country. This is to ensure the children recover well, according to Gayadin. India has been chosen as a main hub for medical attention because of the quality and reduced cost of health care in that country. The foundation has supported about 150 children who needed life-saving surgeries. The charitable organization is dedicated to helping sick children in Guyana whose parents are too poor to afford medical care. Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Coming up, GPF has not given up the search for the four fugitives, and City Hall hires contractor to maintain the Lower Pentier Cemetery. In today's fast-paced world of modern finance, with its many options and opportunities, you will need good advice and help getting value for your money. Hand in Hand Trust is the way to go. From owning your own home or business with our residential and commercial mortgages, we'll help you realize your dreams. You can also access investment deposit accounts, share brokerage services, personal trust, thrift and pension plan trusteeship, property management, investment portfolio management, safe deposit boxes, the convenience of our Cambio, Western Union, and Bill Express services. Hand in Hand Trust for financial services and more. Helping you get the most out of your financial resources and your life. This is MTV News Update. Thank you for staying tuned. The Guyana Police Force has assured Guyanese that they have not given up the search for the four fugitives. The force guaranteed that everything within the law will be done to apprehend the escapees. Find out more in this report. Acting Commissioner of Police David Ramnarain during an interview said the police are still hunting for the two men who escaped from the Grove Diamond Police Station 
The men made good their escape by creating a hole in the wall from the holding area at the station. Ram Narayan said the police have searched for the men at their homes. However, those searches were unsuccessful. He noted that the police are trying their best to apprehend the two escapees. The escapees are 22-year-old Daryl James of 131 Middlewalk, Buxton, who was arrested for a series of armed robberies, and 25-year-old Ivory Hooper of James Street, Albertstown, who was in custody for simple larceny. The men escaped on December 19, 2017. At the time of the incident, there were 13 prisoners in the holding area who were being transferred to the lockups. Meanwhile, Paul Garay is still on the run after escaping from the Lusignan holding area between the night of July 23 and the morning of July 24. He, along with 12 prisoners, borrowed their way out of the prison compound. However, two of them were shot and killed during police operations, while eight of them were recaptured. The other one turned himself over to the police. The fourth prison escapee, who has been able to elude law enforcement officers since July 9, is Kobina Stevens. He escaped during the fiery destruction of the Georgetown prison. Recaptured notorious convict, Ryden Williams, also escaped at the set time. Nikhil John, the reporting for MTV News Update. Town Clerk Royston King revealed that the council has a community enhancement program to restore and maintain the city. King says this is the first time a contractor will continue to work on the Lower Pentier Cemetery after clearing it with over $150 million. Here is Yanis Abrams. The Mayor and City Council has once again embarked on a project to restore the city, starting with the Lower Pentier Cemetery. Town Clerk Royston King stated that the exercise started late in 2017 and will take up to three months for the entire cemetery to be cleared. We are removing overgrowths, undergrowths. We are using an environmentally friendly chemical to help us with the overgrowths and overhanging trees. And we're also clearing uh, and de-weeding all of the canals and the waterways within, the, uh, within this, this cemetery. So this is what is happening. It is part of a wider plan. As this is all a part of the community enhancement program, the town clerk mentioned that they have hired a contractor to clear the cemetery. The said contractor has also been employed to continue maintaining the cemetery. We had people who would just come and they would clean and weed and they would go away. And then the city council will have a, a, a problem, a challenge, finding the necessary resources to maintain it at a level. What we're doing now is that the very contractor who is doing this work built within that contract would be perhaps a three months maintenance program, which would allow him to continually maintain the cemetery as we go along. And this will help us not only in terms of securing the integrity of this burial place, but also it will help us to save money. Because we won't have to go back to do something we've already done. And this is what has been happening. In a previous interview, King mentioned that it will take in excess of $200 million to complete the work. The administrator mentioned that in 2016, the council used $80 million to clear the burial ground. He further said for 2017, the council used $50 million on the said cemetery. Reporting for MTV's News Update, I am Yanis Abrams. The Region 7 Regional Democratic Council will be meeting with the Central Housing and Planning Authority on January 19 to follow up discussions to construct a house that is able to withstand storms. Here is Sandy Rambatar. The Regional Democratic Council in Cayuni Mazaruni will be engaging the Central Housing and Planning Authority later this month to continue discussions to have an all-weather house built in Jawala. The house will be used as a specimen for other construction to follow, according to the Chairman of Region 7, Gordon Bradford. Yes, I will be engaging them this month also, the 19th. We have a conference there, so I will definitely engage Minister. The house is expected to be constructed on the land where a mother passed away as a result of the freak storm in Jawala. The chairman is expected to visit the villages of Kaku and Jawala in the coming week to make an assessment. The villages of Kaku and Jawala in Mazaruni were hit by two separate freak storms last year. 
On the other hand, Bradford says the region has been plagued with steady rainfall over the past month. However, flooding has been avoided as preparations were made to avoid the natural phenomenon. Continuous rainfall every now and then with a shower rain, but no flooding. Always, uh, we have always, uh, in case of anything, we have always been responding in a timely manner, but no flooding so far. So, Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. More news ahead. Stay tuned. Using state-of-the-art technology and highly trained professionals, let Optique Vision Care assist you with your eye care. Visit any of their four convenient locations at Times Square Mall on Grove Public Road, Helena No. 1 Mahaika, at the Giftland Mall, and our newest location at 350 East Street North Cummingsburg for added convenience. Their doors are open every day in the Giftland Mall, Monday through Saturday at Grove and East Street, every Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at Mahaika. Call them today, 266-0126-222-7333 or 227-7744. You are tuned to News Update. Welcome back. Police are currently working overtime perusing the CCTV cameras to obtain a lead in the murder of the Eccles Liberal. The father of three was found dead on Christmas Day on the pavement of Parliament building. Find out more on this Lashana Gomes Canidas report. Prior to the burial of Derek Rampersod, a post-mortem report was released to the police which indicated that Rampersod, a father of three, died from suffocation. The crime chief indicated, based upon information which revealed that Rampersod, prior to his demise, may have been threatened, the police will be furthering their investigation as to who or what may have caused his death. We'll get the investigators, they're not going to ask them. If we send them, no, if they didn't do it, send them to have an interview. With the close family members to hear if they will, you know, if they will say or, or you know, just give any little hint or anything to that effect. Because sometimes, you know, what happens to the um, person talk certain things out of emotion. When the police confront them, they, they don't say anything anymore. As regard various CCTV surveillance within the vicinity of both Parliament Square and the Starbrook Market area, the crime chief indicated that the footage is still being perused by the police. Yeah, yeah, we will look at it. Yeah, we don't, we don't rule out that. We look at it because, you know, that's one of the uh, purpose of those cameras. So we don't ever overlook that. Meanwhile, Natasha Rambersaw, the wife of the deceased, revealed to News Update, since witnessing the burial of her late husband, she is both disheartened and confused regarding the circumstances surrounding her husband's death. Rampersaw is of the belief that the police needs to do more by investigating the last phone call made from her husband's phone. The call was made in a community the deceased did not plan to be at. For her, nothing is adding up. Since the postmortem, the police did not call me or they did not do anything as yet. I just can't blame anyone, but I know someone did it to him. They robbed him, but I don't know why the police not tracking his phone number. Because last, his phone number, he is in Alberta. My husband is in Alberta. So why don't they, why don't they track the phone numbers, call the last number that they used, the phone, the phone number he used to call? and get the investigation done, but I don't know. I was glad to know who did that to my husband. Though. Reporting for MTV News Update, Lashona Gomes, Cornelius. The Ghana Sugar Corporation understands the devastating effect the closure of sugar estates has on sugar workers. It is against this backdrop that the sugar company will be providing psychosocial support to workers. Sandy Ramatar with the details. The Regional Democratic Council in Kayuni Mazaruni will be engaging the Central Housing and Planning Authority later this month to continue discussions to have an all-weather house built in Jawala. The house will be used as a specimen for other construction to follow, according to the Chairman of Region 7, Gordon Bradford. Yes, I will be engaging them this month also, the 19th. We have a conference there, so I will definitely engage Minister. The house is expected to be constructed on a land where a mother passed away as a result of the freak storm in Jawala. The chairman is expected to visit the villages of Kaku and Jawala in the coming week to make an assessment. The villages of Kaku and Jawala in Mazaruni were hit by two separate freak storms last year. 
On the other hand, Bradford says the region has been plagued with steady rainfall over the past month. However, flooding has been avoided as preparations were made to avoid the natural phenomenon. Continuous rainfall every now and then is a shower rain, but no flooding. Always, uh, we have always, uh, in case of anything, we have always been responding in a timely manner. But no flooding so far, so... Sandy Ramutar for MTV's News Update. Stay tuned for regional and international news, court roundup, as well as the Demerara Harbour Bridge Chair Tour. The secret is out. Tayo's Future Shop is the absolute best place to shop if you're looking for quality products at the lowest prices in the widest possible variety. Choose from a vast array of custom-made quality wooden furniture in endless designs. Electrical and household appliances. Clothing. Cell phones and accessories. And much, much more. Tayo's Future Shop and Household Appliances, located at Anna Caterina, West Coast Demerara. Free delivery available. Credit, no me know the secret. I like all you know the secret. Everybody know the secret. <laughs> Regional and international news taken from the BBC. At least 48 people have been killed after a coach plummeted 100 meters or 330 feet down a cliff and landed upside down on a beach in Peru, officials say. The health ministry said six people had survived the accident, one of whom had jumped from the bus before it fell. The accident happened on a notorious stretch of road known as Carva del Diablo, or Devil's Bend, in Pasameo, north of the capital Lima. The coach, with more than 50 people on board, collided with a lorry. Transit police said the lorry driver had been detained for questioning. Internationally, in a surprise move, Ethiopia's Prime Minister has announced the release of all political prisoners and the closure of a notorious detention center allegedly used as a torture chamber. Hail Miriam Desling told the press conference the move was designed to allow political dialogue, but it is unclear exactly who will be released or when it will take place. Ethiopia, a staunch ally of the West, is accused by rights groups of using mass arrests to stifle opposition. Amnesty International welcomed Hill Miriam's announcement, saying it could signal the end of an era of bloody repression in Ethiopia. Although warned the closure of Makalawi Detention Center should not be used to whitewash the horrifying events which took place under its roof. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. <laughs> Here is what went down at the Georgian Magistrates Court on Wednesday, January 3. After a recent video surfaced on Facebook with a 48-year-old Chinese businesswoman assaulting a police officer and a civilian while resisting arrest, she was on Wednesday placed before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan. Maya Kim of Danraj Street Kitty denied that on December 29, 2017 at Rob Street, Georgetown, she unlawfully assaulted Shadi Puran. Kim also denied that on the same day and location, 
She assaulted a woman police constable. Natalie Gibbons resisted arrest from the police and behaved disorderly in public. The prosecution objected to Kim being granted bail on the ground that she is not a Guyanese national and has no ties to the country. Nevertheless, the magistrate released Kim on $20,000 bail and adjourned the matter until January 8. Meanwhile, a Wiz Rock Linden taxi driver was on Wednesday charged and released on $500,000 bail for causing the death of 64-year-old pedal cyclist more than four months ago. Keon Haynes was brought before Chief Magistrate Anne McLennan and denied that on August 23, 2017, at Grove Public Road, he drove motor car HC3809 in a dangerous manner, which caused the death of George Class. Police prosecutor Arvin Moore objected to bail on the ground that Haynes, on the day in question, saw the elderly man was attempting to cross the road with his bike and still proceeded at a fast rate, which resulted in the death of class. The chief magistrate released Haynes on $500,000 bail and suspended his driver's license until the completion of the trial. The matter is adjourned until January 17. Finally, a 28-year-old minor was on Wednesday sentenced to 18 months jail by Magistrate Judy Latchman for stealing from his employer. Derek Otkert admitted that between December 21, 2017 and December 31, 2017 at St. Elizabeth Mission, Madia stole a fuel pump, a starter, six bales of diesel and a quantity of groceries valued $245,000, property of Sherwin Bernard. The prosecutor told the court that Otkert is a minor and is employed by Bernard to work on his dredge. Between the dates in question, Otkert was left in charge of the operation while his employer was away. The man used this opportunity to steal the items mentioned in the charge. The magistrate sentenced Otkert to 18 months imprisonment. Kippany Jordan reporting for MTV's News Update. The Guyana Stock Exchange closing prices for trading session 754. Let's turn our attention to the Denver Harbor Bridge schedule. Technology wrap is next. Stay with us. When reliability is not an option, you need a supplier you can trust. This skilled technician depends on Farfan and Mendes for heavy duty tools. This landscaper earns a living using still equipment. High rates of production and recovery lead to this sawmiller trusting his operation to Wood Miser. Mothers trust the water filtration systems for the health of their families. Thanks to the automatic backup systems, you'll never be left in the dark again. Farfan and Mendes, offering you solutions you can depend on. Welcome to Star Technology Wrap. As always, I'm your host Rajesh Lakan, along with Rochelle. And this week, we will be touching on the deals currently on on H3 products. 
Rochelle, Happy New Year. Well, Happy New Year to you and all our viewers. We want to welcome you into the new year here at Star Computer. We do have some fantastic deals going on for the new year, and that's on our HP products. That's the HP printer and the HP all-in-one computers. Right now, it's a three-day promotion, uh -huh. and we have printers that have been reduced all the way to $5,000. And that there, it's a HP color printer. It can also do black. So it's a very um, home-friendly printer that you can use, and that's just one out of the many printers we have. For example, if, you look, if you're looking for something that has wireless capability, we also have that, and that's starting as low as 9400 where if you have a tablet or a smartphone mm -hmm. and you have the, um, the internet, the Wi-Fi, you'd be able to print wirelessly. That's really cool. Well, sure, there is lots of other brands and of printers out there. Yeah. Why should person choose HP products? Well, HP is a large manufacturer in printers and they've been about for years. And they're definitely very, very recognizable and very affordable. That's something you can guarantee. Star Computer has the ink for all these HP printers. So if you, if you come and buy a printer here, you can guarantee you can get the inks because that's what you'll need. Right? You definitely need new inks to continue printing and you can definitely get that here. Apart from the printer, tell us for the computer. Alright, well we also do have the HP all-in-one computer and that basically we have a reduction on that as well coming with a free HP printer. Any special features in this computer? Well, it's an all-in-one and what that basically is, it looks like a monitor and it has a built-in DVD drive, a built-in webcam, everything capable of a regular computer, but it doesn't have a separate CPU or a separate monitor, it's all built into one. I also wanted to mention we do have a very, very unique printer available. I don't know if anyone knows about it. It's called the HP Sprocket. And what that is really, it's a portable printer. It's so small and it prints out a two by three inch photo. So if you're on your go and you're taking out a picture on your phone and you want to print it out right away, you have that HP portable sprocket printer that can do that. The deal is on that as well? Yes, the deal is on that as well. We do have a reduction on the price for it, but of course, come down and check out all the amazing deals on all the printers. And apart from the deal on the HP products, what else happening here with Stars? Well, apart from the HP deals, we do have a lot of other fantastic deals going on, but you'd have to like us on Facebook in order to keep up to date with that. Well, thank you, Rochelle. And that's all we have for you in this week's edition of Star Technology Wrap. Do join us next week, Wednesday, for another edition. That's all we have for you in our newscast tonight. Before we go, here's a recap of our major headlines. Former sugar worker allegedly commits suicide due to economic pressures. Opposition gets more time to conduct due diligence on Chancellor and Chief Justice appointments. Sophia Venda claims she was raped by two policemen at the Thurkine police station. And in court, Minus sent to jail for 18 months for stealing from his employer. The newscast can be viewed online on MTV's Facebook page and also on our YouTube channel. The news will be rebroadcasted later tonight at 23 hours and at 6 hours on Thursday, January 4. On behalf of our news and technical teams, I am Ashley Scotland, thanking you for watching. Good night.